they will begin to use them. Mm -hmm. Smooths over many misunderstandings. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you've given examples of autoclitics of a type that is a sort of um, meta commentary on what's what is being said, and yes. as you said, it yeah. affects the way the listener responds. Mm -hmm. What about grammatical patterning in general, which is an issue of still a hot issue in the in the psychology of language? Yeah. What, but what is the nature of grammatical be behavior? Well, I think this autocritic is the answer to that. As you speak, you you push the listener around by putting things in your speech so that the listener will respond in ways which will be reinforcing to you. And I think that's what grammar is. If I say house, uh, house blue, I don't know, house white instead of white house, it isn't because uh, I'm applying grammar, but because I've grown up in a world in which I've thousands of times said white house and probably millions of times heard white house or read white house rather than white and house white. These are, are the ways we do things in a, in a particular uh, culture. You've got to put one or the other in. The Latin didn't need, didn't need it. You, there you, had to, you had to agree. The word for house had to agree with the word for white. I mean, you could put anywhere you wanted in, uh, in Latin. The famous passage, lente, lente, what is it? Oh, I've forgotten it now, but... Uh, Lente, lente, curate, noctis, noctis equi. Slowly, slowly run horses of the night. Because you, the, the, the night is supposed to, the sun was carried across somewhere in the, uh, and started again the next day, you see. Mm -hmm. Now we say it precisely the other way around. Uh, uh, horses of the night run slowly, slowly. You use horses uh, as an adjective. All horses of the night run slowly, slowly. Now, we can do that. We do that because that's the way we, have, we make sentences. Uh, in Latin, you could do it because that sounded good, you see. Mm -hmm. it, didn't, it didn't have to be in a particular order, and that was a terrific advantage for a, a language that has uh, grammar of that kind, which identifies adjectives with nouns, and verbs with tenses and whatnot and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but this has all been, been worked out. It's just a way of being effective, of doing the kinds of things that will produce a result. So when you speak about verbal behavior, you're not talking only about little pieces of verbal, little responses, uh, a given noun form or a given verb form. Is there any limit then to the size or complexity of uh, of responding that could qualify as a unitary functional utterance? Well, if you're asking me to say that we are all egalitarian and that chimpanzees are the equal of, of uh, human beings, I would say no. As I would say that human beings are not equal to the other. I don't suppose that an autistic, severely autistic child could ever acquire an, an adequate repertoire for daily life, let alone read Shakespeare. You know, there are differences, and there are differences in ability and in how well things are taught and how much time there is to teach. I, I think uh, schools are a disaster because they take too much time to teach what they teach. And then it's not a fair judgment to say that their students aren't bright, not learning, and so on. They're not teaching. And that can, they can be taught faster, and uh, we could all not only learn to read very much faster than we do, but enjoy reading rather than struggle to, un to read a want ad. Or have a, if, if you do that, you can graduate from a New York high school. Where do you, what do you think uh, are critical areas for research on verbal behavior in the future? Where, what should we be mm. working on and focusing on? Well, of course, I never thought anything would be uh, on verbal behavior as such. It would be on the processes, the basic processes, which produce verbal behavior. And I think that, that what is being done now, and there's a, there's a special interest group that is, is publishing a journal on, on verbal behavior as, as I define it, more or less. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's all very, very good, and it will be certainly, uh, it will certainly deal with how 
verbal responses affect other verbal responses or nonverbal behavior. Um, I think that's very important uh, how children acquire behavior, either as a developmentalist ought to be doing it by how, how it turns up in an ordinary daily life environment or how fast it could be taught by designing more effective contingency to reinforcement. That's essentially what I've done with these centers that teach reading much, much faster, about twice as fast as classrooms can teach it. That's producing verbal behavior of a, of a kind, or textual behavior. There's no question that can be done. And it ought to be done in our schools because they're not, not teaching reading well enough to make it possible for them to learn themselves. Uh, I think we've run out. I think we've run out, too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. It's been a very enjoyable discussion. Oh, that's for me, too. Thank you. And other people are going to enjoy. Thank hearing. you. I hope they do. Thank you. <laughs> okay.